dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Starting today, the final piece of the Robert E. Lee statue in Richmond, Virginia is coming down. Over the weekend, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam announced the 40-foot tall pedestal that once held the statue would be removed. CBS's Naomi Ruckham explains the process and this moment in history. Crews have begun the next and final step in the removal of what many consider a symbol of white supremacy. Really, I'm kind of um, relieved. I look at it as new beginnings and a, a chance to open up the circle again for community space. Over the next month, the 40 foot tall graffiti covered granite pedestal that once held a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee will be deconstructed and removed. In September, there were cheers as the statue itself was lifted off the base where it had stood for 131 years. Public officials in Virginia had resisted its removal until the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis prompted nationwide protests. The Southern Poverty Law Center reports in 2020, nearly 170 Confederate symbols, monuments, and school names were removed or renamed nationwide. Many more statues have come down this year. Monuments like these are no longer necessary. This should be a space for everybody to feel welcome and comfortable. Removing the pedestal marks a turn for Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who had originally said he wanted the community and local art museum to decide its fate. But over the weekend, the outgoing Democratic governor announced he would remove the base before he leaves office. Once it's gone, Northam will give the land to the city of Richmond. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. There is also said to be a time capsule from 1887 inside the statue pedestal. If it is recovered, the governor says it will be preserved by the Commonwealth of Virginia. All right, the forecast here at Not Central is getting warmer, but it's not outside. Of course, that basketball action will be heating up as night one of the WIMT Food City Mountain Basketball Classic kicks off here at the gym. Not too long from now, at 6 o'clock. Let's take a look and see what's going on across our region with the actual conditions. And you see UVA-wise, it has been a dreary day out there today. We're going to continue to see that trend into the nighttime hours. We go over to Buffalo Mountain, and again, just kind of a dreary trend overall. We're going to continue to watch that. But a nice sunrise or sunset up there. I'm used to waking up at sunrise there. Sunset up there tonight on Buffalo Mountain, down into the 30s already up there. We head on over to our actual temperatures, and you can see, see they're still falling fast across the region. 38 right now, Irvin, 40, Plankville, 40 in Ashland, 44, Middlesbrough, 39 in Hazard, and 41 in Somerset. So a lot of cold air starting to drift in as darkness basically gets ready to set in. But nothing to scan on live pinpoint down the radar. We're seeing again a nice little trend there. But the last few hours, that was not the case. It was very active earlier this morning as that cold front came through. But we're going to dry out for a little bit where we could possibly see some more action as we head deeper into that forecast. Don't forget to download that WIMT weather app. It'll give you all those handy tools. But for tonight, those temperatures will continue to drop as those skies clear out. I'll send it back to you, Steve, in the studio. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We'll have much more uh, from the Mountain Classic in the next hour, including in sports and the uh, scholarship ceremony that happened earlier today. We'll have more about that at the top of the 6 o'clock news. Well, Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit collapsed and died after a workout at Santa Anita. The three-year-old colt trained by Bob Baffert had just completed five furlongs in his second workout since finishing second in the Breeders' Cup Classic a month ago at Del Mar. Baffert confirmed the Colts' death and attributed it to a heart attack. Dale Romans, another horse trainer, had this to say when asked what the biggest takeaway in all this is. I mean, horses can die like this. They can do anything people can do. They can get pneumonia, they can have strokes, they can have seizures, they can have heart attacks, just like a human. And, I mean, I would venture out to say it has nothing to do with something Bob's done negative. It just puts a, another dark cloud over his stable. Medina Spirit will undergo a full necropsy, which is required by the California Horse Racing Board. In his last race, Medina Spirit finished second in the, sec in the $6 million Breeders' Cup Classic at Del Mar about a month ago. The Louisville Metro Department of Corrections has seen three inmate deaths within one week 
sparking concerns from civil liberties groups. The LMDC says one of the inmates died due to a prior health issue which they were being given adequate care for. But now the Louisville Metro government, jail staff and ACLU are asking questions. Local police and correction staff say staff shortages and inadequate care may also be a cause. One or two people trying to handle a medical emergency versus five or ten or emergencies at the same time frame, uh, the staffing levels absolutely do correspond with the level of care that we're able to provide. The governor's office and LMDC do not agree that staff shortages are behind the desk, but they do acknowledge them, saying they are down 20 to 30 percent in workers. They also say 85 of the inmates, uh, 85 percent of inmates rather, arrive with a drug-related health issue. President Biden wants to get a key component of his domestic agenda over the finish line before the holidays. The president told Americans today they will reap the benefits of his $1.75 trillion Build Back Better with lower prescription drug costs, an, an issue that has eluded both parties for years. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the White House. President Biden is pitching his Build Back Better bill straight to Americans' wallets and medicine cabinets, saying the plan will lower the costs of prescription drugs. Everyone has less money in their pockets because high drug costs make health insurance more expensive for everyone. The Democratic proposal would allow Medicare to negotiate prices for certain drugs, impose a penalty if companies increase prices faster than inflation, cap costs for seniors and those with disabilities and lower the cost of insulin to $35 a month. That would help diabetics like Aisha Meza. There came a time where I could no longer afford my insulin. I was forced to ration my supply of drug that is as vital to me as water. The president's $1.75 trillion social spending package, which has passed the House, also includes money for universal pre-K and new funding to fight climate change. But not all provisions may survive the Senate, where the legislation needs every single Democratic vote in order to pass. The White House has said President Biden does not expect to get everything he wants and is focused on compromise. Progressive Senator Bernie Sanders, whose budget chair, has pushed to expand the bill. We've got to demand that the wealthy stop paying their fair share of taxes. While more moderate holdouts, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, have consistently fought to curb the cost and scale of the legislation. The country's awash in, in federal dollars. The president obviously wants to get his Build Back Better agenda done as soon as possible. The timeline for agreement is ambitious, with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer aiming to pass the bill before Christmas. Natalie Brent, CBS News, the White House. The Majority Leader warned colleagues there are more long days and nights ahead this month as the holidays loom while lawmakers tackle other priorities like voting rights and the debt limit. Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey is once again in the national spotlight, this time over a Christmas tweet. The Republican admits he kicked a hornet's nest when he put a photo of his family holding guns on Twitter on Saturday. The tweet drew angry comments about its insensitivity so soon after the Michigan school shooting. Some people compared him to the parents of the 15-year-old Michigan shooter. But Massey spoke to radio host Todd Starnes, claiming his critics are blaming him for what happened in Michigan. They're trying to blame me not only for what happened in Michigan, but for shootings that happened three years ago. And it's just ridiculous. They focus on one thing, and that, that was the biggest thing in the media that they could use to try and take me down. John Yarmouth, Kentucky's only Democrat in Congress, was the only Kentucky member of the House to respond on Twitter. He called Massey a name we won't repeat here, and he also called the tweet disgraceful. Some Kentucky lawmakers want to move forward on proposals to pay bonuses to essential workers, many of them who never stopped working and worked even more in the early days of the pandemic. The governor says $400 million of American Rescue Plan money should be spent on this. While Democrats want to start those discussions now, Republican leaders say the normal legislative process needs to be followed. WIMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what health care workers and first responders told lawmakers today. And Pike counties and nursing association leaders told Kentucky lawmakers of a nursing shortage that was already bad before the pandemic started and well into COVID the lack of respect became a major issue when the pandemic started we were heroes 
Now we are people who are to be demoralized. The long hours and tough working environments resulted in many leaving the state and nursing all together. 16% of the people who took the survey said they were very likely or extremely likely to leave the profession. Nursing Association heads joined firefighters and police officers in appealing for a piece of the bonus pie. If lawmakers can agree to using millions of rescue plan money for that purpose. I read about some essential workers receiving hero pay, but the majority of Kentucky's firefighters have been left out of that conversation as well. While they definitely did not get into this profession for excessive pay or benefits, or even praise, it's disheartening for them to see others receive financial recognition. I saw one officer out with COVID-19 and pneumonia even more severe than mine. He was off for seven weeks, a full month longer than me. House Speaker David Osborne released a statement this afternoon saying that they will listen to what this working group wants as well as to what the governor wants, but that they need to follow the normal legislative process, especially when it comes to appropriations and revenue issues. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. The group's next meeting will take place on December 15th. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, online dating has scammers conning folks out of money and causing emotional damage. We'll hear from the FBI about how to detect fraudsters. A calm night after a very active morning with those showers and storms rolling through, but how long is it going to stay calm? I'll have the latest forecast in just a few minutes.